Welcome into another episode of Who Should You Choose, a video series where I go through the prior videos, questions, and comments and help you with your lineup decisions and discuss anything involving hockey or the game. So uh, let's get into it. We got 15 minutes. If I don't get to your question, be sure to subscribe and notifications on so you can get your question in for the next video as well. You can come check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash no sleeves 12. I am live around 2 p.m. Eastern time every single day and I'll help you or I'll answer any of your question uh, live there. So let's get into it. We'll start with Sir BG. My man, play a lot of Tarkov with him. So sub sleeves, I haven't been in the stream in a bit, and I've been watching your vids. I made the call of Caulfield. He is a Habs fan. And I have McKinnon's team of the year. If I were to take the time to play the Barzal moments, would you put Mac or Barzal at center? Putting Barzal as the third line seems like a waste at the moment, so none of those two. So one of those two have to be uh, center. Side note. All-Star Game Heatley better than Nash. That All-Star Game Heatley card looks so much fun. I just wish he was a team builder or a master set player. Danny Heatley needs his time in this game. I don't get it. He is one of the most popular players of all time. Um, that said, honestly, if Barzell you're going to get for free, having him on the third line with 99 speed, there's really nothing wrong with that. I think that uh, if you want to put one of them in the top six as a center, I like McKinnon probably a little bit more. Although, Barzal can get higher speed. He's just lighter. Barzal is a winger in this game. Thinking of choosing Svechnikov for the free style icon, but I have Rick Nash. Would I play Svech in front or behind him? What abilities would I put on him? Second, any tips on how to check or how to cycle the puck? Is overload better than behind the net for cycling? I've been running behind the net and struggling to cycle. Last, last McCabe or Robinson, who do you like better? Okay, there's a bunch here. In terms of your freestyle icon, team context is going to matter because I think that if you have Rick Nash and Team of the Year McDavid, I really don't think Svechnikov is going to be a, of the utmost value to you. I think McCabe is going to get more value. But the best card from this event is Jack Eichel because he can play center and be a dominant uh, winger as well. Um, so probably Eichel. But again, team context is going to matter. Uh, how do you cycle a buck? I have many videos showing you how to use the overload. I would use the overload in NHL 24. I just think it is uh, a little bit better for you. I also think that, you know, in the lower divisions, behind the net can offer some things as well. I have many videos on this. Go look at my YouTube shorts. I show you a million ways to score and use the uh, the um, the uh, overload. Um, McCabe or Robinson? <clears throat> McCabe is great. He feels way better than the stats, but Robinson... Uh, bonjour, sleeves. I built the Caulfield MSP last week, thinking uh, the week two MSPs would be better and that there would be a right-handed defenseman. Well, joke's on us. As I already have Eichel's X-Factor and there's no right-handed defender, I wonder who to take with the free MSP. Who should I choose between Caulfield, take Caulfield, power down the card I built, and upgrade X-Factor? Oh. Hmm. I guess that is a way to technically... Oh, hmm. Interesting. Take Eichel, power down his X-Factor card. McCabe, take McCabe and play him on a strong side on my second pair. I already have left-handed Robinson and Heiskin in. Oh, my God. I mean, even if Svechnikov is going to play on your third or fourth line, that's probably the play. Hey, Slaves, I really needed a right-handed D option, but the new style icons have none. Would I be crazy for taking Hasek as my free 93? Um, I love the I love Hasek. I wish he was better in game. I've gotten nothing but bad reports about Hasek. Just it, 99 shooting and goaltenders that are 6-1. They just get eaten alive upstairs. Um, or should I grab McCabe and have two left defensemen in my top line? Ugh. You shouldn't do that. I mean, in a vacuum, if you were asking between those two things, I would, I would probably take McCabe. Uh, Hasek is one of the best goalies out there. This is why I hate. This is why I hate goaltenders. I have literally not seen one positive thing, and now in this same video, um, someone saying that Hasek is great. Goaltenders do not matter, guys. Because it is all placebo. If a goal, if you go up against somebody that you would normally beat, and he makes one desperation save, and you think that he's the greatest goalie. It's all going to depend on how you play, but you're putting yourself at a disadvantage with a smaller goalie. Hot take. Robo Penguin better than the Screaming Eagle. I think that's nostalgia. I do like the Penguin, but again, I think I'm trying to... Like... 
all things considered, like the relevance, it's like an eagle, Washington, D.C., the color combo of black and blue and gold, and then like the 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 font, the hint of gold. Like there is a lot more that goes into the screaming eagle jersey, guys. That's why, in my opinion, it is the best ho- hockey jersey. You know, um, I think that there's like for example, I'll give you I'll give you another example. Try not not being biased. I think that one of the best logos in all of sports is the Minnesota Wild like beast head or whatever it is. Like if you look at the intricacies inside of the Minnesota Wild logo, it's incredible. Which is why I hate when they do the wild and cursive or anything that's um, uh, font related. It's just a total disservice to one of the best logos in hockey in sports, not even just hockey. Uh, please pick two. Flashback Barzal, Arcel Solani, Caulfield, and Kuzmenko. Okay, I don't even need... Well... Solani and Barzal. Also, I know your guy is little, but Bluey is the best cartoon out there for dads. Um, I mean kids. You know what's funny? I was sitting there, I just tweeted out that I can now recite the hot dog, the hot dog dance from Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, because that's what is going on in my life. Um, it's funny because, uh, I was like, man, I just can't wait till you can watch Pokemon. I'm wondering what age that he can like retain it. I think like five or six, maybe. Uh, Barzal and Kuzmenko, Barzal and Solani. It's Barzal and Solani. It is Barzal and Solani. But the best from this event, no, it's Barzal and Solani. Hey, Sleeves, I think the 88 mechanic card is very underrated. The card is also well-deserved, 29 points in 12 games. Okay, that's the star of the month, Gavin McKenna. Interesting, interesting. May says, hey, I hope you are good. So question, this is not regarding a player choice, so feel free to skip. As you've mentioned on stream a few times, goalie passing seems to be so delayed because it's more like the real NHL, which I can understand. But shouldn't it be incentive to play the puck more to get more games in and less stoppages? No. I'll stop you there. What the, what the developers of EA this year are trying to do is to replicate real hockey outcomes, outcomes, but they do it in a very arcade way. For example... Um, when a team is hemmed in to their own zone, the other team gets very tired, far more than the attacking team, as does the goaltender. And it usually results in a goal. We have the full pressure system. I don't think that it is a perfect way to replicate it, but it is them trying to give you an outcome that is more realistic in a very arcade way. Playing the puck has been a thing since, I don't know, I've been grinding versus since like 2006. So... You know, you don't hold on to the puck. You want to just go, 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 go. That's everyone's mentality. Um, there's really no reason to hold on to the puck. It's actually viewed as like a toxic thing. In NHL 24, again, no confirmation. If I ever talk to Mike again, it'll be I will bring it up. But I am 100% convinced that in this game, they slow down the pass or make it less accurate or your players aren't able to pick it up as cleanly in NHL 24 in the hopes that you hold on to the puck more because – very rarely does a goaltender in the NHL ever stop the puck, have control, and then play it out in the defensive zone when no one else is around. Very rarely. So this year I've seen more dunk goals ever, and I think that is the reason why. Um, the second question, which follows a bit with the first one of me being impatient, is it a technology that would make replays end for both players if one of us presses X or A? I personally don't want to see replays. I just want to get in as many games as possible. If someone wants to watch the replay... Pr- I am a content creator. There are some times that I need to watch the replay for a video, and I apologize if you match up with me. But I also don't apologize because if more than, more often than not, I, I'm I'm everyone's Super Bowl in the random Division Three and Division Two guys, so I get your hardest games. So sometimes you're going to watch the replays. Um, but no, if someone wants to watch them, let them watch it. Don't let them score if you don't want to watch the replays. Um, sub slaves. I have a God squad where all my players are set except for four C and third pair defense. I also have a bunch of all stars in my collection. Should I sell them now or keep for team of the season fodder? Ugh, don't. Yeah, don't save for team of the season. Like it's like two months away. Don't do that. There's really nothing on the auction house I want to buy right now. I have three fourths of the team builders, so maybe I sell. Yeah, I would sell and work towards Sallow. Yes. Uh, for the love of God, leave squad battles alone. This comes off of the, oh, this is going to be great. I'm sure this comes off of me, uh, explaining my idea loosely in the last episode of who should you choose where I had an idea to revamp squad battles. I can't wait to read this for the love of God, leave squad battles alone. It's a garbage mode, but it's perfect for just grinding objectives on your own time without having to sweat. Content creators keep bitching about it and then act surprised when the mode turns into something unintended. 
please. The majority of us don't like it, but would rather have an offline option the way it is to grind when chasing objectives. Also, adjust rewards for the grind. Give us more EA, but don't turn it into some competitive mode to satisfy those who have unlimited hours to play in the day. My dude, I want to, uh, first of all, for any like-minded people like this, you just said that you play squad battles to mindlessly grind to get a reward at the end. You just described a job. So if squad battles is a job, which for majority of the player base it is, that's ridiculous. You are playing a video game. At any point that you are playing a video game and it feels like work, you shouldn't be doing it really. But we are all addicted to the game. We are all, the game is engineered to keep us into that one more, gotta grind, FOMO, I don't want to miss out on the next content, myself included. So to say that you would rather keep something mindlessly boring so that you can ease, have an easier way to mindlessly grind uh, is a joke. And I think that that is an absolute awful mentality to have when it comes to any video game. The fact that you don't want something to improve just proves that there is an addiction to not just this game, but ultimate team modes and really every other video game that is designed to really just keep you chasing the carrot so that's a joke my man i you know i apologize we disagree i'm happy that you're happy with the state of squad battles i think that's an absolute mess um again i don't know how in my uh recommendation that you wouldn't be able to do the exact same things that you're doing now but have more enjoyment because there's an actual um there's actual um story and stuff going into it for anyone that doesn't know what i think squad battle should be is i think it should more emulate franchise mode there is a mode in mlb called mini seasons it should not be exactly like mini seasons but you essentially play a small section of games let's call it 36 it could be in a week whatever you play 36 squad battles games if you want to max out your squad battles rewards anyways fyi so let's say it's a uh eight there's seven teams AI teams and one of you and yours and your team. So there's two conferences, four teams each. Okay. It's a, let's say the top four teams make the playoffs, which would mean that you could potentially play 14 games uh, in the postseason. But let's say it's a best of five in the playoffs. So that would be a maximum of 10. So um, you've got 10 plus uh, 24, maybe 28 regular season games. You can skip them by quitting out and whatnot, but you won't get wins, you'll get losses. And along the way, you are getting packs for the rewards of hitting these milestones. So uh, again, you win the President's Trophy, you get a pack. You win uh, the Art Ross, you get a pack, right? Like those are the things that should happen. I also think that um, one of the more interesting is a guaranteed reward from squad battles. So my idea was, is there is 10 cards flipped over at the start of every squad battles run. Okay. Flipped over. You can't see what they are. Every time you hit a milestone, you get to flip one over. And let's say if you hit all of them, you win the cup, all of that, you can flip over seven. And then let's say and in that 10, there is a guaranteed purple card. Okay. Guaranteed purple card. But you don't know what it is, and sometimes if you don't pull, if you don't flip it over, you have no idea. If you select a, one of the unturned cards, you might get an eighty-four, but the eighty, the eighty-six is or eight and above is is over there, and the other other way. On top of that, let's say your coach card is you, and the more you grind the mode, you unlock scouting level one, and you start with an extra card flipped. That's just like a, a off the cuff way to make scouting in franchise mode for Hut. I think that's how it should be done. I also think that we need to get away from the weekly grind. It's a mess. Some weeks people have the time to play a full week of games. Sometimes they don't, right? It should be a month-long season. You Let's say you can do it three or four times and get um, the same amount of rewards that you would through every week in squad battles. You could rush out and finish it in a week, let's say, if you're insane. But let's say you can take your time with it. And then if you're done... I would love to see like XP paths and not just in squad, but like overall. And then like you work towards that. And then once you've completed, if you still want to play squad battles, you get your objectives done by completing stuff in game with your teams. Like it, there's so much more that can be done with squad battles. This take is just an absolute joke in my opinion. No disrespect. All right. Philip says, I like squad battles too. They just need to give us more cool objectives to do. I don't want it to be like franchise mode. If I want to play that, I can just go to that mode. Here's the thing. If you wanted to play that, you would play that over hut, right? Like you don't want to play, you want to play hut, right? I'm not saying make it a one for one like franchise, but implement franchise like things 
because a lot of people love franchise mode, into squad battles. You are playing offline regardless. Um, FC24 makes squad battles so much more fun because of the amount of objectives you can do. I would love to see endless amount of objectives. In my opinion, what I think content should be is eras. I think the launch of the game, for example, let's say it's a month long, and it is the... 2000s era, so 2000 to 2010. Every team has a progression. Every NHL team has a progression path. You can earn five cards. The last one is a master set level player. I'll use the Sharks. 2010, the 86 overall is Joe Thornton. 85 is Patrick Marlowe. 84 is Joe Pavelski. 83 is maybe um, Owen Nolan, you know, for example, and you go so forth for every team right? But to complete that, you've got to complete objectives like score goals with San Jose Shark players. Uh, and then once you get that first card, let's say it's, uh, ooh, what would be a good one? An 81 overall Douglas Murray card. It's like get 100 hits with Douglas Murray. And then that unlocks your next objective in that path. And there's one of those for every single team for the month, okay? Or let's say six weeks even. We give, we give people a lot of time, all right? And then in there, squad battles can help you get these objectives done because you play your you play a season with the whole San Jose. You you go out and try to get the San Jose Sharks base roster so that while you're doing squad battles and getting those objectives and trying to work towards rewards, you're also getting the progression path done. Again, I should do a full in depth video of my ideas for it. Um, I don't think it's the best, but it's just something that I would personally love to see. Hi, Sleeves. Is the market going to rebound with 87 overalls after the All-Star break? I have a few tradable All-Stars. Yes, they will. The All-Star cards are literally just meant for new players that are like Christmas time players and uh, players to trade them in for objectives. No one cares about Very few people even care about them because they don't upgrade. But because there's so many 87 overall influxed into the game, um, what will happen is eventually they'll all be traded in for future events and things like that, and then it will teeter out. Um... He said, consume a set. All right. Uh, I pulled the 94 team of the week, Kucherov. Uh, should I keep him or try and acquire the team of the week, Mac or McDavid? Um, in all honesty, team of the week cards will always go down in value unless they are um, very meta players with crazy abilities. So um, I'm trying to think of a, of a very good example. Uh, the one that comes to my mind is like is NHL 23. It was like the first week of the season, Tage Thompson got an 86 overall primetime card or live moments card for anyone new to the game. And he got gold unstoppable force. And it was like, that is unreal. And he had good skating. And it was like, what in the world? And that card held its value for like a month, right? I don't think Kucherov will because he's going to get another card soon and he's not a he's not tall. There's a lot of left-handed wingers. So, hey, Sleeves, thanks for the your content, man. And I, like you, have unlocked another tier of tiredness being a new dad. Congrats, buddy. I'm at sort of a crossroads, slowly been working towards an ultimate power-up icon and closing in. I currently have 290 overall team builders and almost ready to make Shanahan. My top six is still using GOG Obi. Uh, with the new Mario out and overall better centerman, do I make Wayne and use him as a second-line center until I can buy the new 92 Mario? I usually spend more time playing the show anyway, so endgame isn't necessarily a factor. First line with Shanahan would be Team of the Year, Heisey, and Team of the Year, McDavid. Line two would be X-Factor, Knight, Wayne, and Madonna. Yeah, I would probably go with, um, hmm. if Endgame isn't a thing, Gretzky right now is still better than Mario. Mario will be better, but that that random next-gen Mario is such a good centerman card. I thought you finally managed to knock trash, talk trash about my devils, but you failed. We are going to make it to the playoffs. The Sharks shouldn't even waste their time playing any more this season. I mean, yeah, you're just being a biased sports fan. Like I said, I, I have this conversation with many people online on social media. It would be my career. I can talk unbiased about the teams that I enjoy watching. For example, the um, the Morgan Riley and um, Ottawa Senators thing, I think was like like Morgan should be suspended, and I'm more pissed off that the other core four guys literally just skate in and don't do anything. I also think that Morgan, that was a – little over the top with the with the stick to the head, but absolutely should have been the response. And I can't wait to argue with a lot of you guys in the comments below. But that's why we are here. Uh, also, I would love to not have to watch the Sharks anymore this season. Uh, but luckily, you know, or unluckily, they're probably not going to win the lottery, unlike the Devils who got bailed out four times because of the lottery system and should be so much worse than they are, except because they got gifted lottery bailouts now get a very good team and they still can't get it together 
FYI, they were also my Eastern Conference pick because they should be great. And also, no more team builders for the Devils. Enough. Hey, Slaves, quick question for you. Uh, I... I find myself always a Division 5 online player and can't seem to get past that despite the wins I get. Should I get on NHL 25, wait for a bit to play online, and build my team up first before jumping in right away? If you watch my No Money Spent series, like, when you start the game, what I would recommend is, like, the first two weeks, I don't even touch rivals, really. Like, I do because I get everything done, but if I'm a normal player, like, I wouldn't build your team up before you go up against a a lot of players, you know? I just 100% think that that's how you should do all right, we talked about uh, we talked about uh, the Vancouver Canucks jerseys or jersey conversation. The Vancouver skate jersey is so ugly. Everyone used to hate it when it was first a thing. I have no idea where all the love comes from. Uh, this jersey now, nostalgia is a crazy drug. Hundred percent, nostalgia is a crazy drug. Um, there is a lot of people associate things like you know video games, for example, being just unbelievable. But if you went back and played them now, you would not like them because at that time your life was different, less responsibilities. Everything's great. All of that hundred percent. Um, I also agree that the Vancouver skate jersey was super ugly, but I think the way it's done now is, is clean. I think that everyone associates that Jersey with the colors of the V like that V Jersey, which is one of the worst hockey jerseys ever made. I think that the way Vancouver does it with the black matte helmets is just such a mean look, a lot like what the Buffalo Sabres do um, with their, with the goat head. Like it just looks mean. Like hockey is a sport where the crest matters more than anything else. If you look at every other professional sport, the Jersey either highlights the number or like a word, right? Like, so like basketball, like it's usually just the team name. There's really very rarely like logos, or they're very small, and then, like, you know, the numbers are huge, name on the back, like, all that, right? Football, same situation. Numbers are massive. Um, I just think that, like, hockey, it's the one sport where the crest is the... It, the their jerseys are so much better than every other sport. Uh, like, I, I just think... I don't know how that's debated either. Um, but I agree that nostalgia is, is big on that. I think that um, there are a few teams, though. Like, for example, a lot of people say that the Sharks 2D logo is better than the 3D logo. As a Sharks fan, while I love the 2D logo because it's, you know, it's when I became a fan of the team, not even close. It looks like it's done in paint. Um, like, I completely disagree. Does it look clean on, on our jersey every once in a while? Yeah, but the, th- the best Shark the best shark logo is the 2007 to 2012 uh, black alternates, like the Dan Boyle jerseys, they with the full shark. It doesn't have the the cutoff. It's like legit. You see the fin of the shark. That should have been their primary logo for the next hundred years. It's like so. I I, I don't know. Again, I'm not a Vancouver fan, so uh, I don't want to speak for them. But I feel like you know. I think the Islanders one is probably one because I think the Fisherman logo is like. I think that the Islanders should have an, a lighthouse logo, like a full on figure out a way to do it. Cause like the fisherman logo is nasty looking, like it's really well done, but the actual Jersey from the nineties, like the Ziggy Palfy Jersey, like with the weight, like, Oh God, those were bad, but the logo fire and the Islanders logo boring, but like it, the, one of the most boring, right? So, uh, love the talk though. And I would love to debate jerseys again. It's obviously always going to be biased and subjective, but I would love to speak to anyone that is a fan of a team that like has a disagreement with a jersey that I say is great. Um, but that is going to do it for another episode of Who Should You Choose. Thank you again for watching and all of the subscriptions. I'm almost at 60,000 subs on YouTube. So if you watch these videos or any of my videos, just toss me a sub. Um, I'd really appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.